What better today, friend? Welcome to the Advantage Joy at Work podcast. I'm thrilled that you've joined me here as I help marketplace leaders unstuck their true potential to thrive in life and leadership, to build successful, sustainable business with collaborative, high-performance teams and joy at work with practical, neuroscience-based Advantage guides and coaching. If you need an outside voice with a fresh perspective to challenge and empower you, your team or business to a new level of performance and engagement, then let's talk now. Hey there and welcome to this Advantage Guidepost where we're looking to understand your circles of power, influence and concern. We've already established that you cannot control what happens outside. You may be able to influence it or you may be concerned about it, but you cannot control it. You only control your own thoughts and your own actions. Sorry, you can only control your own thoughts and your own actions. It's your choice. You can, of course, influence others and some things outside you, but you do not control them. So I'm borrowing and adapting from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Imagine three concentric circles. The inner circle is our circle of power and contains all the things that you know that on your better days you can control. These include your own thoughts, the words you use, the actions you take. You also have control over your emotions, your effort and your own self-care. And then outside of that, the middle circle, These are things over which you have influence, a limited control and a lot less power. These are things that you can directly influence, which would include your health, your family, your home, your job, your finances and your friends. And then outside of that, the third circle, the outer circle, is our circle of concern. This includes things and people that matter to you, but over which you have much less influence and even less power. The further from your inner circle, the less influence you have. These might include the weather world events and politics, accident or injury or illness, and also other people's perceptions and their actions. I'd highly recommend that you get hold of the show notes for this episode, which you can find at joyatwork.coach. your locus of control. When you perceive or believe that external events or people threaten your circle of influence or your circle of power, you are focused on things that you cannot control. And when you choose or allow yourself to focus on what you cannot control, Your circle of influence contracts. You've chosen an external locus of control. In contrast, when you choose to focus on what you can control, your circle of influence expands. You have chosen an internal locus of control. If you imagine your three circles, when you have an internal locus of control, your inner circle of power gets larger and you have an increasing amount of influence 
over things that you can influence in your circle of influence and your circle of concern a little bit more. In contrast with an external locus of control, where you're thinking he should, they should, others should, they should. That puts pressure on your circle of influence, which in turn puts more pressure on your circle of power, which contract. You're making the things you cannot control in more control. A third and more profitable focus is on the spirit within and a God who is still on his throne and in control of everything. A fourth outer ring. And then we humble ourselves to the finished work of Christ, knowing that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. From Romans 8.28 Fear, stress, anxiety and depression can increase when we believe or we perceive that our power, influence or control are diminished or threatened by challenges beyond our control. Fear, stress and anxiety are reactions. They're not illnesses. We have shifted our locus of control from us to them. As Stephen Covey said, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. Six essential human needs. We're going to do a recap of these as concerns. Our six essential human needs and the response that we have to each area. Our six essential needs, if you remember, is the spaces model. Survival, pleasure, attachment, control, esteem and service. As we go from survival, it's easier to influence our response but there is greater fear of loss. When we're serving others, it's difficult, more difficult to influence. But our fear of loss is much lower. See, it's not just about any threat to your circle of power. It's what you perceive as being threatened and how important that need is to you. You'll recall that we all share six essential needs. These are the key things we wish to influence. When we perceive that our circle of power is being threatened, our influence to have our own needs fulfilled diminishes. The more fundamental the need, for example, something life-threatening to our survival, the greater our fear response to the threat. And we should all be acutely aware that the more fundamental the need for us, the easier it is for someone else to influence our response both positively and negatively. Well, think about it. The advertising industry is successful precisely because it plays upon our more fundamental needs and fears. For example, you need to eat food. That need is most often associated with pleasure and price in advertisements. New cars are associated with prestige or significance, a much higher need for self-esteem. But also, scantily clad human models is a fundamental sexual need. There's a little insight. When you focus on the external threats to your needs, your circle of influence and power to protect those needs diminishes. When you focus on what you can control, your circles of power and influence over your needs and concerns increases. Start where you are, do what you can, use what you have. Arthur Ashe 
Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. What we think shapes who we are. The better we grasp this truth, the better equipped we can be to influence the trajectory of our lives. But don't take my word for it. Both the Bible and modern science provide evidence that this is true. What science is demonstrating today is what God told us through Solomon almost 3,000 years ago. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That's Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. And the serenity prayer, known chiefly through its use in Alcoholics Anonymous, begins, but a useful prepare prayer for everyone who wants to win this battle in the brain. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. In our next edition, we'll be taking a look at what happens when you are faced with a challenge, a threat, and what is fear, stress, anxiety, and depression in your brain. I'm Dr. John Kenworthy, and it's been my pleasure to share this Joy at Work Advantage Guide with you today. Thank you for joining me and supporting my work. Remember, if you ever think so you might benefit from an outside voice with a fresh perspective to challenge and empower you, your team or your organisation to a new level of performance and engagement, and let's talk now. You can follow the link at my website, joyatwork.coach. And if you know someone you know would benefit from this Joy at Work guide, please share this with them either by sharing the podcast link or if you're listening on the Joy at Work website, it's even easier to just click the share button. <laughs>